Welcome to Phoenix Basics. In this video we're going to cover object types and object attributes. Previously we have covered the object menu and object dialog box and we're now going to take a closer look at some specific object types. For this object I'll go to the general tab and click on attributes. Uh, this gives you access to the material uh, roughness wall function slide velocity of the object. Uh, the default material for a blockage object is the 198 solid with smooth wall friction. Um, another common material type is 199 um, which is just the same but without any friction. Uh, you can choose between different materials by clicking on types. Um, here you can choose gas liquid solid other materials such as this default uh, or domain material which could be either or could be any of these objects depending on how you set up your model. Uh, within each of these you have different gas laws for different gases um, and similarly for liquids we have different liquids available and lastly solids we have different conducting solids available for you. Phoenix uses sand grain roughness by default um, and the wall function is by default log law. You can check any dialog, any options you aren't sure about by clicking on the help question mark in the top right corner and then clicking on whichever thing you want to know about. So for wall function law, if I click default, you'll get this pop up um, explaining the various options available and here option one uses the wall function set as the global in the main menu which is defaulted to log law. Finally you have slide velocity um, by default this is stationary i.e. the surface is not moving you can also have this to slide or spin depending on what your boundary conditions are. So that covers all of the basic options available to a blockage object uh, depending on your simulation and what equations you have turned on, you may have more or less options available here. That's enough for a blockage object. Um, I'll go across a couple more important objects. Uh, inlet uh, is a 2D object, so it requires you to select a plane. I want a Z plane. Um, if I click apply, that should now shrink that down to 2D. Um, clicking on attributes you then have a different set of attributes as you did for a blockage object. Um, there's quite a few options here but essentially an inlet object is a fixed flow rate um, and you can either set that flow by velocity, volume or mass flow rate. Um, you can do other things such as set the turbulence intensity um, ambient temperature coming in, inlet density, um, or whether this is an import or export object. Um, that's probably a bit advanced for this early tutorial, but uh, you can always find out more about any of these options by clicking on the question mark. You can also choose the object side to be high or low, um, which is quite important depending on what your or where your inlet is placed within your domain. Okay, uh, it's just warning me about no flow from the inlet. That's fine because I'm not interested in that at the moment. Um, next, we'll move on to an outlet. Uh, this is similar to an inlet, but it is a fixed pressure surface rather than a fixed flow surface. Um, so here you set your or, sorry, external pressure here is ambient relative to this relative pressure. That's what you set in the properties menu. We'll cover that in the next video, uh, along with a coefficient, which is essentially how strongly that boundary condition is enforced. Um, you can have inflow at outlets. Um, if you have a, a favorable pressure gradient, you can get flow coming back in from outside of the domain and when that does happen you need to use these external values here to set what those values should be on the way back in. Uh, we'll cover plates now. Um, 
This is very similar to a blockage object, but it's 2D. Uh, you can set whether it is fully blocked or whether it has some sort of porosity. Um, so you, you could almost manage, uh, sorry, model a, a mesh type object using this, uh, using different porosities, and you can set velocity and pressure drops across that. Um, you can set different parameters for the high and low side uh, as you would a blockage object. Similar to the inlet and outlet objects, we also have angled in and angled out objects available. Uh, these are 3D objects, so they require three dimensions. Um, and these produce inlet and outlet surfaces based on intersection with other geometry. Um, so they are faceted objects um, which are required for geometry intersection um, and they will produce an inlet and outlet object on the intersection plane between the inlet, well, the angled in or out object and blockage geometry. So it's very important that you have your intersection face correct Otherwise, you may get some strange flow uh, stemming from your angled objects. CHAM's website has a good tutorial for angled in and angled out objects, um, which can be useful for getting your head around how these work. The attributes for the angled in slash out objects are exactly the same as the corresponding inlet and outlet objects, um, but for the 3D object rather than a plate type object. I'll just show you the angle out for completeness. Again, exactly the same. And if you're not sure about any options, you can always use the question mark to explore. Another common object type is wind, particularly if you're doing wind around buildings, like external wind flow, this is very useful. This is used to set up a wind direction across your entire domain. Uh, this can include a sky and ground plane, so include open sky, include ground plane, um, and does your wind speed uh, relative to a north direction, and you can specify uh, your north direction in your domain. Um, you can also apply a data file um, if you're modeling this on a particular part of the world, uh, as well as the uh, profile type um, and effective roughness. Uh, you can also store uh, additional wind factors for that object if you so wish. Another important object type is heat source. Um, this just uses your geometry as an area to apply heat to. Um, this geometry could be intersecting solid and fluid regions, um, but it will only apply it to participating materials. So if you have a conjugate heat transfer problem, which involves the solid and the fluid in the heat transfer, it will apply it to both of those. Um, under attributes, you can set the heat source as total heat or a fixed temperature. Um, and you can get more information about that by clicking on the question mark. The final object I'm going to touch on here is the null object. Uh, as you'd expect, this is null. It doesn't do anything in the simulation and it's purely used for setting up uh, grid regions for more controlled meshing. This is very useful if you have a large complicated object or a large complicated geometry uh, with different areas that you want different uh, mesh fineness. Uh, levels in and you can use a, a null object to set up uh, these region boundaries which gives you more control over where your cells are fine and where they are coarse. Um, this has no attributes um, and the only important thing is which direction it affects the grid in. Uh, by default it's all three uh, but depending on your setup you may want that to only affect one or two. Uh, we'll cover more about that in the meshing tutorial later. To summarise, we have looked at some different object types. We have covered blockages, plates, inlets, outlets, angled ins, angled outs, wind, heat source and the null object. 
and we've looked at all of their different attributes. Thank you for watching. Please check the description for links to our tutorials, FAQs, forums, social media and CHAMS website and subscribe for more videos coming soon.